Hello, Storyteller, Storytelling Run. I'm going to explain how to do a Christian role-playing game. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Uh, let me just switch over now to... All right. So for the Lord RPG, Christian Space, I'm doing. I'm finishing this up. It's a Kickstarter. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the front of the few pages, I will have um, uh, a GM screen kind of reference stuff. And I'm still kind of working out what I want to put it there. But these are all sort of the printable, quick access uh, stuff that you can use in the game. Obviously, the weapons. And it's very similar to Dungeons & Dragons. And OSRs, okay, so it's it's it. I have one major difference, really, uh, but most of it is you know the similar damage and all that. Um, uh, but let me go down to. There's, there's, you're gonna have vehicles, you have robots. So this is salvage. You can you can search around in the salvage, uh, you know, in treasure looking for items and and I break down all the different sort of treasures into different categories that you then can use to build things or repair things um, that you need. <clears throat> All right, let's just go over the Christian part of any role-playing game, really. Um, what a Christian RPG should look like. And this is my advice to you. I'm, I've been GMing now for 45 years and you know, more than a dozen different ones. And then also I've written my own. Okay, no need to play God or Jesus or the Holy Spirit. There's you know, no need to bring them in. No need to play them like play, pagan gods or deities. Even if you brought this into Dungeons and Dragons. Like I'm literally saying you could do this in Dungeons and Dragons and be offensive to all the freaking... D, D people, but whatever. Um, no need to play God. Or Jesus. There's no need to have that at all. No need to have angels intercede. Now you can do that if you want, because it's definitely church history, but you don't have to have that. And I do in my game, I do have one, the, a nun, the woman can call, you know, I see an angel. It's called, I see an angel. It's like her blessing. And yes, blessings in Christianity are like spells. I'm just, you know, I just have to use the terminology and the game mechanics and but we don't use spells and magic. We use blessings. We and we don't need um, we don't need oh what's the word the the components. So we don't need magical components. We just use the word, and that's our blessings. Um, it is all about the player as a missionary trying to serve the Lord. Uh, so you're just a person hoping that what you do is for the Lord. That's all. You can make mistakes. You can die. You can fail. No big deal. God's will is going to happen no matter what. So don't concern yourself with, am I doing the right thing or not? Because God doesn't care. You know, I'm being, I'm using hyperbole here, but God doesn't care whether you're doing it right or not. He cares that you're just trying, right? He cares that you're, you're striving, you're struggling for, for God. And thusly, our mistakes are part of it. Okay. So now if you're going to be heretical or whatever, you know, heresy, uh, that's your problem, not mine. But, um, you know, let's just, let's move on. Uh, and, and I don't deal with heresy in the game. And the reason I don't isn't because it's not something you could or couldn't do. It's part, certainly part of church history. I just, let's just start with the basics, you know, let's just go after pagans and, and, and that thing first. You know, obviously heresies are huge, but that's a whole campaign setting that you and I could delve into later as we get, as we create this culture of Christian RPGs. And it would be fun to do, but I'm not concerned about it right now. Uh, no need to reconceptualize God's will or the Bible. So, okay, so no, no need to create a whole new setting or genre or, well, what if this and that? No, just um, the, I might have said it in here. Yes, the, um, I'm going to skip to this just because it kind of relates to that. Maybe I should put those together. The entirety and complete instructions for how we should role plays in the New Testament. Read the New Testament. That's what they're doing. They're dealing with, you know, they're planting churches and they're just missionaries. They're just going around, um, you know, correcting people and stuff. That's that's really it. You don't need to think of a whole new world or setting or what or angels and devils do or or whatever. It's not necessary. And the demons, um, you know, I'll explain in a sec. No need to wonder if, if one is doing God's will. OK, that's not. You don't have to worry about that. You just try. You, you need to try and do things. That's the important thing about missionaries. And by the way, when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about reality, right? But I'm also talking about it in the game. The, ergo, that's the, this game, a Christian role-playing game should be getting us to wake up uh, uh, into uh, being evangelists and missionaries. And we should have fun playing this game. It's a lot of fun. If you watch my videos on YouTube, my actual plays, IGM, I'm not just a client. I mean, I'm not just the owner. I am a client. I actually, I... I don't just pretend I'm a YouTuber or, or a terrible YouTuber. I actually do what I'm talking about. Um, and I put it out there and I don't edit it. I just put out the actual games we do. If you look at the latest Dark Ages one, yeah, that's not edited. I didn't change it. I didn't fudge the dice. Um, you know, and I and I even wanted to, and I openly, you know, asked the other player, players, should I? No, let's just play it. All right, here it goes. You know, no need to bait or argue theology with professing Christians. Okay, so in this game, it's, it's not about 
accurate theology. You could be wrong. Even missionaries could be wrong about their theology. Grant, and I don't want you to be wrong about your theology. And it took me many years before I, I even got my theology, you know, closer and closer. I go to Pastor John MacArthur's church, by the way, Grace Community Church here in, in um, Pagan Land, uh, Hollywood. Here he's just 20 minutes north of me. So I go there. So I'm, you know, I'm a reform. I don't know. I don't even know the terminologies. Like, like uh, my church brothers do know it. I'm kind of a black sheep in the church. I, I don't really, I'm not plugged into the terminologies and the, and, and into the, the volunteering. I was there I, and I even went to some fellowship groups or whatever, but I, I, I don't know. I just don't get it. Anyway, I think I'm a reformed Baptist or Calvinist or whatever the heck I am. I don't, whatever it is. I'm, I'm a definitely like, uh, uh what is it called? Cal, like Calvinist in the sense of we're the elect, you know? The, the chosen, the entirety. Okay. I already said that. mission and church planning. That's it. So the game is all about going out, getting people, getting villagers and galaxians and whoever to realize that uh, the life they're living in, you know, slavery and oppression and sacrifice are wrong. And then getting them to accept that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll accept whatever this church thing is and learn about your God. That's kind of like the basic game. That's it. Now you, and that's, and that's the fun. You're going to have opposition. You're going to have a, uh, cultists and and monsters and creatures that they worship and they're going to worship things everyone worships something no matter how much they deny it the first commandment of the 10 god is literally daring people to um not worship anything he's like saying if you're going to worship you only worship me so he's saying try and not worship something you know anything because you're going to worship something that's kind of what he's saying so he's actually not saying you have to worship him isn't that amazing? The first commandment of God says he does, he's not saying you have to worship him. He's saying if you're going to worship, you can you know can't worship anything but me. So uh, anyway, all aspects of prayer, blessings, casting lots, rolling dice because casting lots is actually in the Bible. They cast lots. Uh, they did it to pick the, the you know the 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 replacement for uh, Judas. Uh, they did it uh, in uh, David did it in the Old Testament. You know they they rolled dice to. You know, hoping that to, to understand God's will. So in this game, and I'm not saying our rolling dice is that, but we can roll dice and the dice can fudge, you know, can not fudge. The dice can uh, determine our the outcome of our success or failure in the game. And that's not holy or unholy or, or demonic or anything. That's us in, like in real life. In real life, when we do things right, if we don't know what the reaction is going to be, it could be good or it could be bad. Exactly. So, and we have to go with it. We have to go with it, whether we succeed or fail as Christian missionaries in the game uh, and in real life. Ergo, in the game, we can practice and we can die, and then, but we can try again and keep practicing. And getting our, we, we're, the regular role playing games, these pagan games that we Christians are playing, are lulling us. The entertainment we're watching is lulling us. It's making us forget our church history and our Christian missionary psyche. So, that's my goal here is to tell you hey, you can have entertainment and fun things while, while still educating your, your psyche and realigning your psyche to be a, a mission based, you know, evangelist based. I'm having a blast doing this. I'm kind of sacrificing myself a little because I am playing the pagans and not actually evangelizing, but that's okay. I, I, I play my role as a Christian to help you players, um, become evangelists. Okay. All aspects of prayer, blessing, yeah, uh, matters of, yeah, well, this is here. Okay. What matters is that we take up the cross. We strive for the Lord. That's what matters. And I'm going to say this. I'm, I have really yet, I haven't heard many, maybe, maybe it's, there's a reason. I don't know. I'm, I'm actually going to ask around, um, at my church, but I haven't really heard many about stri um, evangelism. Like it's more about affirming faith and, uh, and fellowship in learning. It's more about learning, which is important too. But I'm like, where's the, the call to take up the cross, you know, kind of thing. I, I don't really even, even at my church, I don't get that. Now the focus of my church is the, for them is church planning. They, but they're, they do it through pastors, um, in that way, which is legit. I mean, for sure. Um, my goal as a layman is to try and get us laymen to, um, understand evangelism and church planning. So I, but what's weird is I don't see many, I don't get many sermons that teach me that I'm, I'm, I had to like sort of learn this myself, not even at my church, but here, you know, through, through this, whatever. I'm hoping this game will do that to you. It will make you so interested in church history. Cause I, and when I was doing star Wars RPG, I got so, you know, rabbit hole after rabbit hole looking through the, the Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedia, you know, the fan 
of Star Wars. And it was very, it was interesting. I was like, well, this is interesting, all these different things and, you know, coming up with ideas for, for adventure. But then I realized like, why am I, you know, now I'm like, why, why am I not doing this for church history? Because we have so much, way more vast information to learn about church history to, to create adventures with. Uh, than any of these fan, you know, Star Wars or Marvel or anything. We have so much more history that we're just, we're forgetting. And I'm le- I'm researching stuff now and it's amazing and creepy and freaky deaky and, and you know, and stuff to, I can use. Uh, and I, you know, hopefully someone, you guys out there will sort of create a, a For the Lord RPG Dark Ages Wikipedia. There we go. That would be cool. Um, you know, that relates to like real world stuff. Mission, evangelism, rebuking, getting believers to repent, fellowship, uh, planting a church is all that matters. Oh, getting believers to repent? We're getting anyone to replant, really. Um, but anyway, I'll just leave it. So that's 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 the church, or that's the role-playing game. That's what you can do on in any game. And um, is that something that the other players will accept? Probably not. But why do you, why do we Christians have to accept paganism? Because the, all the games are paganism. I mean, I got this one here, Vazen, Bison, you know, that's, I just bought the kind of a Cthulhu of Nor... Norway or whatever and it's all about appeasing the pagan gods those idols and those those spiritual beings that's paganism full on um and they have Christian characters in it and they even have the church and I, I probably should read a little more but the, but the, the 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 pastor or whoever they had in there as a character to make he looked like adult you know the way they kind of made him so there's that and I, I need to kind of re- critique that but anyway all right let me go over how the game works um, I did some infographics here, but I, um, on dice rolling, oh, let me, um, make the view a little nicer. Okay. This game is a D20 game. Okay. So you just roll a D20 plus your trait, which is your, um, you know, ability score. Uh, uh, oh, here they are. Aggression, spirit, Aggr- aggression, is, uh, uh, let me go down. Aggression, awareness, savvy. Spirit, intellect, social. So aggression is your, basically your strength, but it's, you know, I do medieval armor and combat. I don't know if you can see this here. Let me, let me switch the camera real quick again. I do medieval armor and combat. And uh, it's, and what I notice, it's not the strength. It's not how strong you are, how many muscles you have that makes you a, a, an incredible fighter. Uh, it's your aggression, or at least your net for a natural sort of first, you know, fighter. It's their aggression. Um, you know, experience comes into it as well and training and stuff. But aggression is really the inherent um, initial thing. So it's not the big bulky muscle, you know, bodybuilders that are the best fighters. It's the ones that have the most aggression, okay, uh, as far as natural talent. Anyway, awareness is, um, so that's what I, uh, so that's whatever, that's your whatever. So that can combine strength and dexterity and all that. Awareness is, uh, you know, your perception your situational awareness, your dodging, your shooting, also your aiming. So to me, anyone that's just aware, you know, and you can be a fat plump guy or a skinny gymnastic person, you know, and you, it's, and, and you know what I mean? To me, strength and dexterity are, are mis, miscues as far as the real, what really is, um, these things. Okay. Savvy is, is your secret and used to be called secrecy or for dark ages or, um, technology, tech, technology, whatever for the, future but I, I decided to combine it as savvy savvy is your ability your your desire to learn things like pick locks or computers it's your 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 ability to acclimate quickly to a technologies and stuff and and things that you want to do but they're but they're on the simplistic level like quick and quick and dirty stuff um a plumber a, a thief will we use a lot of savvy uh, along with awareness um it's it's your way that you you're wanting you're wanting to 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 be tricky at things, tricky or figure out tricky things. Uh, spirit is obviously like wisdom. It's your um pers- you know your you know cl- clerical stuff or whatever, uh, faith points and all that. Uh, courage and perseverance. You can you can use it to resist and and uh, as well. Um, and by the way, these are what you use also to as saving throws. And I even allow I very I'm very loosey goosey with saving throws. Like I allow you to use whichever one you think you can persuade me is the one to use for that. Um, but I, I will pick them out myself. Um, for mainly aggression and spirit are the main ones. Or awareness too. Uh, spirit and aggression for painful things like poisons and um, uh, you know things that affect your body directly. Awareness and aggression is for like dodging or you know getting out of the way of things. Either one of those or or physical 
things like climbing and, and leaping from a dark pit or avoiding a pitfall or whatever. That's awareness or aggression. Uh, intellect is is obviously your intelligence. It's and it, I use that overall for crafting, engineering, research, like high tech stuff, not the savvy stuff, but the higher researching, you know, um, researching, doctoring, all that kind of stuff. Uh, social is obviously for you know all things: charm, persuasion, acting, performing, trading, uh, your wit, whatever you want to do. And these are the only constant numbers in the game, like plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. Um, plus five, plus six. I don't want you to do plus six. I think I have it in here. I, I think I put the rule in here. But plus six. If you go to plus six, so it's like D and D. You know, same correlation. But if you go to plus six, if you, and I allow, I, I actually do like. I don't like to have like limits on what you can go to. But if you do go to plus six, you have to take one away from another trait. So I make it very expensive to get it. Um, you know, you got you got to use experience points called glory points to buy things. Um, but if you get it up to six, you know, you have to take away from another so that so that's like how you're focused so much on your inte- intellect that your aggression will now go down one if you you know if you choose that kind of thing now the other thing i do is your die ranks which is your skills any any blessings any bonuses that's a second die okay and that you get to roll as well and that's part of the dice pool the d20 plus one of these because it upgrades okay it goes from d4 to d6 to d8 so if you have two skill ranks in this and you can and you buy them with glory points and every every level is is how much it costs so one the first one is one glory point to buy the second one is two glory points see so by the third is three glory points see so it gets more expensive as you go up but there isn't a limit i don't have a cap like 10th level and here here's where i'm gonna i'm actually gonna skip to going beyond level five because you are die rank five because you can you can have like um let's say you have four skill ranks in shooting um and then you have an aim which will give you another die rank so you go to five but then you have a gun that has two die ranks because it's so it's a superior weapon right you can keep adding you can go to seven die ranks right you can go past the d12 well how does that work okay so that's that's the the new thing i'm trying to uh i'm going to go to that real quick right now just to and I'll come back to all this, but I, I really, this is important because this thing is what's been bugging me lately to clarify and clean up. Now, this is the only thing I'm really changing from the first edition to the second is this part right here. Uh, and it's in there, but I just kept it simple here. I'm trying to really explain it better. So if you're thusly, you don't have a limit to how many bonuses and skill ranks for your skills that you want. And, you, and by the way, skills, you pick whatever you want. Um, you can pick the two hit of your sniper rifle. You can also pick the damage of your sniper rifle as a upgrade. Um, for armor, you know, you can you can actually upgrade your armor with your glory points um, because it's like you're readjusting it and you're making it better for yourself. So these things actually, you can constantly add die ranks to these different things um, to no limit. But it costs you, you know, if you want to go to six die ranks, it costs you six glory points. And so how do you do that then? How do you get, you know, if you, if you get uh, seven die ranks, that's above five, the D12. Okay. So what you do every, um, well, I have a little, where's a little thing here. So here's a little chart, but every, every five die ranks is a D12, right? If you think about it, every five die ranks is a D12. Um, and in between that, the remainders of one, two, three, and four is just D, D4, D6, D8, and D10. So every, um, I should have a graphic down here, but let me go back up to here. You know, every die rank is a D12, and then every one in between is one of these, the remainder. So if you if you have 25 die ranks, you've added all these things together that give you 25 die ranks to your roll, what do you get? Five D12s, right? You divide it by five. So what is that? That's your dice pool. And right here is, here's kind of what it looks like. If you have a dice pool of, 5d 12s whoa you know because of all these you know but you know like you're doing a, I would like to, in order to get 25 die rings in anything it'd probably be like a laboratory you know um you know i got this and i got this and i ate a good meal and i'm using my prayer die ranks and i'm using my skill die ranks and i'm using the scanner you know the the laboratory scanner die rank and my laboratory tools die ranks and you're adding all these things together you know and obviously this slows down the game but this is where the you know, the, the, the nerdy RPG does their thing. And so they're going to have like five D12s. So you roll the five D12s and you keep the highest. Okay. It's that it's, you keep the highest. 
So is there a limit then? The limit is no, because you can also explode. There's a rule. It's, it's an optional rule, but it's really not optional. Everybody uses it. If you happen to roll two sevens, you get to add all the dice. So you get this crazy number, whatever, um, which could be fantastical. You could be, you know, but if you think about it too, if you're in a lab where you can get 25 of result with 25 die ranks, you know, in your role, then you're in a pretty big lab where you can do a bunch of different things. And, 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 and then exp- I explained that when you do succeed at something, uh, you, you then get those, those become die ranks. You can then disperse amongst other things. Um, so if you're like in a laboratory building a, uh, a gun, right? You can, if you want, if you get 25 die ranks and you roll and you roll this and ex- you know, your D 20 plus your intellect plus whatever the skill is to, to a weapon building a energy weapon. You have to pick that a specific skill building energy weapons. Um, then let's say you roll, you have 25 die ranks, you, the dice explode. I don't know. Let's just say the number is 32 result or probably even more than that. Let's just say 32, whatever. So then I would, um, that's a whole nother aspect of it, but it's in here, but I would, you, 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 you make the difference of whatever the, whatever the goal number was, subtract that from that number. Okay. Then you divide that by divide, uh, half that. So if, let's say the success was a 20, just the number 20 out of 32, they got 20 because the, the test row number was 12. It's probably gonna be higher than that actually, but whatever. Let's say 20 divided by half, half is 10. Now you have 10 die ranks. Those 10 die ranks now are on that weapon. So you can add two for the shooting, two for the damage, you know, uh, two for whatever. I, well, there's 10 die ranks. You're gonna make five for the shooting and five for the damage. This awesome weapon, you know, whatever. Or you can take off a die rank and make it light. You know, so it's a really light weapon. And I would say, okay, sure. Use a die, you, you spend one of the die ranks to make it lighter. Uh, spend one of the die ranks to counter a fumble. Okay, fine. It's more sleek and I got it. So you have these 10 die rings to play with then on that weapon, you know, as different factors. And those die rings are D4, D6, D8, D10, right? So, so that's how that works. Um, so then it's a fun little dice system where you can constantly add more die rings and have fun with it. And not be overpowering either because you keep the highest, okay? That's what a GM, a GM wants you to continually upgrade your character so you feel like you always have uh, something to aspire to, but it causes, of course, a diminishing return. There's a diminishing return as you get higher and higher, but there's never a cap or a limit necessarily. And the trait is the only constant number and that trait is limited to, you know, one through five. You can go to six, but you gotta, you know, you're now focusing in on something and got to take off from another. You can go to seven, but you're now got to take off, you know, a trait from another. Um, and so that hinders you from being too crazy. But if you get crazy and want to focus and become, you know, like kind of autistic or whatever, where you just, you're a sci- mad scientist and you're, you're getting unhealthy, that's fine. But again, I don't want a constant number for the skill bonuses. I want a, you know, a, a roll. Uh, you, so you could still roll a one. Okay, you could still, and by the way, if you roll a double one in there, you get a fumble. You know, there's a, yeah, I roll a fumble. So if you make the superior weapon, you could also have a, something, you know, bad happen as well. Maybe it may not be, may not be to the weapon. It may be that I damage your laboratory, you know, that kind of thing. If you roll two ones in that dice pool. So yeah, getting higher, getting more and more die ranks to, to add, you know, five D12s risks, risks too, right? Adds risks. So that's cool too. Um, so I hope I've explained that, but basically as you do, as you roll your D 20 plus your trait and you add a bunch of die ranks, but you know, because of your skill, cause you're let your equipment, your, your weapon, uh, you had, a, you got a good meal, you know, in there, that's a night, that's a dice roll, fun dice roll. Um, you got, um, whatever bonuses are you have, those all get to be added together and as a dice pool divided by five, you keep the highest. So that's how that works. Once you succeed at something, and this is, um, this only matters on specific roles, you know, like to hit is just succeed and do damage. That's, that's clean cut. But these roles here with the die rank result, that's what this is called, where you want to know how much you succeed by. And that has a lot to do with engineering research. Um, and here's, here's the other categories here. I keep, smacking my lips because of my coffee. I can't believe I'm almost done with my coffee. So here's what I love about this game too. P- 
piloting and calm links. These are two things you actually use in combat. These you roll to get a die rank result. You're trying to roll super high with all your skills and all your die ranks, you know, and getting a super high result number because you then can, with that success, you can give your uh, uh, die ranks to your other players for their roles. So for the gunners or to add to, to defense for your ship. Um, same with the comlinks. They can disperse the, his, their, the, the comlinks are always rolled first in, in space combat, spaceships. You know, whoever's doing the, doing it like, you know, the scanning. We, sir, we got a, you know, ship here, detecting a ship and all that stuff. You know, I want to make this fun so that everyone has a kind of a role in, in the space combat. And you're going to have a, you're going to have a comlinks person and you're going to have a piloter, piloting guy, or I should get better terms. I don't know. Uh, so the comlinks person rolls first and it's, it's versus the other, the, the, the opponents, you know, whoever rolls the highest gets to use their comics. The ones that lose don't get to use their comics. Keep it simple. So the one that wins gets to use, but they subtract that from the opposing person, you know, the opposing target. So let's say that they roll a 20 and the opposing one rolls a 10. So just keep it simple. So they, they succeed at 10. So they get 10 is their success. Half that is five die ranks. Okay. So half of that 10, five die ranks. They got five die ranks now. That's their die rank result. Five die ranks, okay? Half of whatever their number is. So that is turn, is now converted into dice. And well, that equals D12 right there. But he, the, but the, the comm link one guy wants to give up two for the pilot, two for the gunner, and one for the defense. See? So now the piloting guy gets these two die rings because the thing about it, the, the, the comm links guy is like, you know, here's some targeting numbers. Here's some, you know, flight p- patterns. Here's some, you know, so the piloter can can get a little extra bonus there on knowing what's going on. Um, that's what that is. And then the two for the, to the gunners, like here, I'm giving you the location of that ship, you know, the coordinates and, and their flight pattern or whatever, you know, and then one for this defense is basically, uh, adding, uh, I'm, I'm blur- blurring out our ship, you know, with, with, um, cloaking, like kind of a fuzzy cloaking. So when they target our ship, it's going to be harder for their ship to hit us. See? So that's a lot of fun that doing it that way. And then the pilot rolls their role. And then same thing, if they roll a 20 and the, the villain rolls a 10, and so they get 10 now divided by two is five die rings. So those five rings now he can give to the, def- the added to the defense of a ship. And by the way, that plus the comm leak one will combine. And then we roll, you know, to add to this ship. So let's say he gives two to the ship. The comm links guy gave one to the ship. So that's three, three die rings. So that's a D six or D eight. That's a D eight. So I roll that or they roll that and add it to the defense of their ship. Uh, then he can give some to the gun. He'll obviously give some to the gunners. Um, or he might even have his own gun, like a fixed forward gun, you know, so whatever, you know, and then, then we go from there or he could say he wants to shoot out of there and I will say, okay, spend a couple of those die ranks to get the heck out of there or, or all of them. Um, and then that's a legit thing too. There's rules for that as well in there. Surgery, same thing. You want to, you know, someone, someone who, who, who's got a, a nat 20 grievous wound, they're at minus D 20 or, or minus not D 20. That'd be dead. Uh, minus D eight. So minus three, three die ranks they're at, that's their wound. So whenever, so someone can get a grievous wound. If, 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 if you roll a nat 20, boom, they got a grievous wound based on the weapons damage. So let's say the weapon is a, uh, a really good sword and that does D8 damage. That's three die ranks D8. So they're at minus D8. They have a huge sword gash minus D8 or minus D3, sorry, uh, ranks. And then, um, three die ranks and then the surgery they need to roll to try to get those three die rings. So when they do a surgery, they got they got to roll a high enough number, which would be uh, what six above uh, whatever they need, whatever I tell them, whatever I decide is the number. Because as a GM, I can decide or I can add die ranks and like I can add a D eight, roll it to a to a twelve, and then decide that that's the number they got to roll to to above, you know, to uh, get three die ranks to then cure that or heal that wound, um, kind of a thing. Okay, so that's kind of how the in prayer, you know, let's say they roll a a, a, a a 20 prayer, total of a 20, and 12 is the number to beat by default. So whenever there's not an opposing roll, uh, 12 is the number. So 12, uh, they beat, and I would, I would do that for surgery too. I would say just 12, unless I felt like there was something else adding to it. You know, maybe he's doing surgery in a bad place with no lab. Then I would, okay, I would add a die rank difficulty to that. Maybe two die ranks because it's a really bad place, I said. Bad place, no lab. That's two die ranks. So I would roll a d6. Let me just roll it real quick for the fun of it. Two. So two added to 12 is 14. So he has a 14 difficulty now. 
to um, do the surgery. And then he has to get above that to, you know, get those die, die ranks to oppose the, the person's wound. Uh, prayer. So let's say they're praying and they roll a, a 20. And 12 is the default. So eight above 20 is four die ranks. So they can now they have four die ranks. They, they did a prayer. And, and it may, you know, I, you know, they had, they had their original die ranks in the roll or whatever, but they, 20 was the result, but they rolled a 20 above 12 is eight. So eight divided by two is four. So they got five or four die ranks to disperse amongst the players. Okay. I hope that's clear. I, I love this. It's, it seems complicated, but it's really not. It's just, uh, it's just, a the die rank result and you have that to get the die ranks. And then if you, when, and then whoever uses up those die ranks converts them to a dice pool, which is uh, by dividing by five. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Die rank, uh, the die rank result is just your raw roll number subtract and you subtract the 12 or the opposing roll. And then when you have that, that'll be your die ranks that you can then just use them as a dice, dice pool for whatever they're for or, or disperse them amongst others. Now this is for specific things. It's not for shooting or, or combat, and it's not when you're trying to convert someone or uh, trade. It's not for that. That's just a win or lose type thing. So those th those rules are more prevalent. These are for specific things that happen in the game where you want to know you're trying to do more than you know. So I like this because this this is an option for when you want to try to you know how much you succeed by matters, and that's in life too. Some things, you know, hit or miss, um, uh, succeed or fail. And those we play in the game very quickly. But some things we got to stop and go, oh, you're doing something like a surgery. Oh, you're, you're, you're crafting something now. Oh, you're engineering now, you know. And the piloting in Comlinks one goes pretty fast. I mean, it, it does when we do it. It's pretty fun. We, you know, the once you when you know all the rules, it's, it goes pretty fast. You know, the Comlink guy does it, rolls it. Okay, I, oh, wow, I got that many. All right, give two to him, one to him, and, and it moves along pretty good. Um, so there's that, I hope that was, hope I explained that to you. Um, and here's kind of the basics, uh, of the game. And I'm saying in year two, um, how this works, you know, you can add up the die ranks. I say in the basic game, the maximum upgrades is five die ranks. And I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm almost, I'm really done with the game, but I'm trying to finesse these last little bits concerning this. Should I, should I just go ahead and, um, you know, take this out and just teach you the die rank thing, you know, above five immediately, or especially for kids or whatever, just leave it at that. Like once they get the D 12, they don't get any more dice for now, you know? And, and, and in the, in the beginning games too, the first, you know, six to 10 sessions, this may be the case because they may only have one or two die ranks, uh, bonuses, uh, at any one time anyway. Plus you, you, you know, you might give them an extra one here and one there and, um, and they go, that's it. So I don't know. Um, um, I'm trying to think if in the recent games, because I'm playing a, a Dark Ages one and they're, they've only gotten three sessions now, and I don't think they've used any uh, beyond rank five so far, die rank five. Um, they do use the die rank result though for prayer, right? When they pray, they do use that immediately because they're, they're trying to get a high roll above that, you know, so that I, they can then disperse die ranks to the others. So I probably should just kind of you know, use it immediately. Um, it's, and you know, when I was a kid, when I learned Dungeons and Dragons, it was, it was really complicated, right? I mean, it was really, I was really, I didn't care. I was like, so into it, but you know, today we got so many distractions that we're trying to make simpler games for, for kids and stuff. Cause they're, you know, they're just go off to do, do Fortnite then. But that's it. We kind of, we should really get them into, into these games. Um, so this just explains it more, you know, I'm just trying to do like infographic and, you know, uh, a test number is 12 is default. And then as a GM, you can kind of just say a number, determine a number based on the, this little suggestions, or you could do the whole, uh, die rank thing where you, you, you spat off different factors. Um, uh, and then you literally roll a dice pool to, to decide the test number based off of all the different factors. And it'd be 12 plus whatever the, the dice pool is. Um, I should probably at, Oops, I just did something weird there. Yeah, I should probably um, say dice roll uh, final dice pull. Because that's what you're rolling. Because it's the die ranks converted to a dice pull. 
Um, I, I, I really, that dice pull there is, yeah, let me, let me, I don't, I don't introduce it yet. So roll final die rank. Yeah, I should, I should probably introduce it pretty, pretty like in the beginning here. I feel like in the infographic, cause you do kind of end up using that stuff pretty quick, actually not necessarily the research and, and engineering, but the, um, but definitely the dice pull type of thing because if you get enough if you get over five die ranks um with all the bonuses and or especially with blessings you could use up die, rank, die ranks pretty quick or get up pretty quick anyway so so the, the, that's that's how you do the game mechanic the dice game mechanics and um it all fits in here so um you know here i have die ranks everything's got die rank bonuses here in this and these are pre-made characters um you can use these because they're very simple you can as a starter you know print these out and give them each a little sheet that they can use and, and start here. That's fine. Um, this is all you need for a character. Um, it's very, it's, it's really simple, but again, the die rank result, die ranks and dice pull is, is the one part. If you can grasp that, then the rest of this all works that way. All the dice and rolling and stuff. And again, most of it is, is succeed or fail. Um, so you don't, you don't need the dice rank result. You do need the die ranks and the dice pool. That will come into play all the time. Uh, but the dice pool is generally, you know, D2, D4, D6, D8, D12, and not the additional. But the dice pool is, is just whatever additional there is, keep the highest. But you got to you gotta use them all as dice ranks. You can't, like, throw in a D4, a D8, and a D, you know, a D12, and a, you know, because of all these different things, you have to combine them all, okay? Anyway, I'm, I'm just kind of scrolling now because I don't know... Uh, as far as game mechanics, uh, the combat, all this stuff, it's important, but, uh, I think I just wanted to get across that right now about the die ranks, the, 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 um, and I'm trying to explain it in the simplest and you know, the simplest way I can with this thing, but I'm also trying to incorporate it into the whole game, you know, all the other game mechanics stuff here. Um, and you know, and then of course going to here uh okay here let's just i'm gonna end it with this anything can be made or designed just thinking in terms of die ranks or die, you know or drs any factor of any piece of gear or technology that gives a a bonus to a, the character can be can be viewed as die ranks so you know any part of the gear is a you know you can you can have a die ranks for that whatever it is um the shooting the damage the aiming of the game of the gun which can be something the toughness of the gun against you know getting damaged and stuff um helping with fumble rolls or whatever. I don't know. So whatever, anything they, these are then added to whatever the die rings that the, the character has for that particular role combined to form a bigger pool of dice to roll. It also keeps in check and balances out any overpowering. So when you do, yeah, when you do dice pools, it's see, I, the reason I do die, dies, die ranks and dice pools is because I, I want you to be able to continually add stuff without being overpowered. So if you continually added plus one, plus two, plus one, plus three, plus four, plus one like that, you're going to have a constant number and that constant number is always going to succeed. You know, if you, if you add up all that, you know, and you get like plus 13 and you roll, it's like, it's not that exciting to me because you're always going to get plus 13, you know? So, um, I want you to not know what number you're going to get. You know, it's going to be between, it's going to be between one through 12, but obviously you can explode dice. You can get a fumble, um, et cetera. You know, so it, it's, it's more to me, uh, invigorating that this way. Um, but also a little tougher to understand. But this 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 um, chart here is simply divided by five. You know, but I'm just showing you a little chart. Uh, so here, twelve. See, twelve divided by five is two remainder two. So you get two d12s, and the remainder two is d6, right? D4, d6. And this is just again the same explaining that uh, total rolls. You subtract twelve, which is the default test number or the opposing role. So if you're piloting and you roll a 30 and the opposing role is a 10, you get 20. All right. That's your direct result. Divide that by two becomes 10. And 10 is your die ranks. Divide that by five. And that's your dice. Now you can use if you choose to use it next, or if you disperse it amongst the others, then they get those and then they can create their own dice pool. Okay. And same, I got crafting engineering, research, um, and these little fail charts here for the research. And uh, I got nothing there right now, but I'm I'm done with the game. I'm just trying to 
you know, polish this, make sure it's understandable. I, I'm so into the weeds with it that I don't know anymore if I'm explaining it right because I've explained it over and over and over in my head and now I don't know, you know, which part is real and which part is fantasy. Uh, so, but Christians, we have a game where you play, you as a GM can get your people to have fellowship, edification, and evangelize. And you have to play the pagans. And you have to decide the level of uh, harrowing, true to real life paganism, or just fun PG versions of pagans and what they do. Um, and uh, you know, in the, as a GM and players, you know, we gotta wake up. We gotta wake up. Okay, that's my clarion call. This is a ministry, by the way. This is a ministry for me, and I hope it's a ministry for you because this is about having fun. Because I'm kind of, I'm kind of doing a cheat, life cheat here, where I'm actually having fun at this, but uh, and playing a game. But at the same time, I'm trying to get you all and me and me to become evangelists. And my way is to, is to G, as a GM is to get players, play a game, get them realizing, you know, that they got to go out and do it. Okay, I'll stay here and make the game and have your fun and, and, and then get you to work on it. But uh, the players work on their evangelism in the game and it's fun. Um, and they have fun too. Like, they shoot space worms and space ogres and all kinds of stuff and have space spaceship things and i you know i have a dark ages version and i have a which uh, which is up uh, for free on my website again it doesn't have this in it i should probably add i should probably add just add these two pages in there just just to help you know because that's really the only major change i've got little polished things but this is the only and it's not even a change it's it's just aha I'm explaining it better anyway so uh, that's it for this long-winded babbling um, how-to game, how-to on for the Lord RPG, um, and I hope that um, you all will partake in this. And this this version is going to be put on my website as well as I think Drive Through. I hope they'll let me uh, put it on there um, for for the on-demand publishing. And if they don't, I'll figure out something. But um, uh, yeah, so that's that. And uh, uh, it's coming out soon. I'm almost done with this part. I have the first version uh, on my website. And if you get that, I'll give you, you know, I'll obviously give you the updated version when I get it done here. Uh, but it has all pretty much everything except this, you know, the, the, um, the, the dice right here. Actually, I'm pointing at it just to show you again, this part right here, which I should probably just put in there right now. Um, but I'm, I'm fixing up a lot of little polish and stuff in it. Okay. Uh, so a lot of work, but a lot of fun. It's a ministry. Join us, and I'm on Discord. Um, go to my website, you'll see the link. In the game of life, Christians, in the game of life, let's roll holy dice. <laughs>